And greetings. Happy Wednesday. Welcome to the Steve Day Show here live and on demand on Blaze TV, radio, and podcast. I am Steve Dace with Aaron McIntyre and Todd Erzin. A lot going on here on the show today. We'll tell you about it after we tell you about our friends over at Hillsdale College, where, of course, you know, a lot, a lot of the central hub of the rot gut we are battling right now in America is our university system. There is a remnant, and one of the paragons of that remnant is Hillsdale College. They are still abiding by their original founding mission, going all the way back to 1844 to provide the kind of serious education needed to preserve the blessings of civil and religious liberty across the land. This is still their guiding light on their original campus there in Michigan, the other campus they have in D.C., and all the work they do all over the country. If you want to learn more, there's a short video when you go to Dace for Hillsdale, F-O-R, daceforhillsdale.com. It's just over a minute long. That's how short it is, but it gives you an idea of how Hillsdale's work is working to uh, preserve uh, what's left, anyway, of American liberty, and maybe how you can help take part in that mission as well. Uh, At daceforhillsdale.com, again, you want to head over to daceforhillsdale.com. Hillsdale.com. I, I mean, you, you've maybe heard the expression in, in the past about people who love the fall or the holidays, but also love summertime. I, as much as I love that time of year, I don't want to wish my summer away, right? You've maybe yeah. heard that expression. Absolutely. I mean, you, you strike me as probably that kind of a person, right? You know, I love those times of year, but don't want to wish my summer away. Would that kind of be kind of how Todd Erzin rolls? Oh, give me 90 days in Ju- 90 degree days in July. Yeah. Absolutely. I could see that. Yeah. I, I'm that way about today's show. I don't want to wish away Aaron's montage. I don't want to wish away Buy, Sell, or Hold, which is one of the most favorite times we have on the show, and that's coming up beginning at the bottom of this hour. But, guys, it's, it's, been, it's been two weeks. Maybe has it been three? Because of our schedule and his traveling. It's, this is the longest, I believe, we have ever gone without a visit from the prophet of woe and lamentation. And based on what he's talking about on Twitter, I'm, <laughs> I know. I'm here for whatever's happening. I mean, the, next. The, can you imagine the amount of woe and lamentation that is stored up? I mean, I I, I can't wait to get to the last segment of the show. I know you ain't wrong. I might just I might even I might Daniel, you're up, and just sit back. Let's see what happens. All right, fire up the War of 1812 Let's Overture. find out. <laughs> yes. All right, so the prophet of woe and lamentation, Daniel Horowitz, will join us at uh, the end of uh, today's show in the final segment. We will have buy, sell, or hold starting at the bottom of the hour, but let's begin, as we always do, with Aaron's rundown of what happened while we were away. What happened while we were away, brought to you by Et Two Comedians. Now even lefty comedians are getting in on Operation Joe's Gotta Go. Here's Jimmy Fallon on NBC this week. Who is this? It's Barack. Gonna have to be more specific. (laughs) Obama. Oh, I know. I I, I was was just a test to see if you knew who you were. Oh, Joe, Joe, you're making about as much sense as you did during the debate. (laughs) Thank you. Not, not a compliment. John Stewart of Comedy Central, who many believe has as big a hand as anything or anyone in the dumbing down of political discourse in this country over the last 20 years, is also growing weary of Uncle Joe. Droning on for 17 minutes this week about how Joe is unfit for office. Biden spoke at the NATO summit last night. I realize I was talking to your wife. I personally ask you to extend your service. <laughs> Maxine Waters, your thoughts. They've seen President Biden. They've lived through his presidency. They've also seen former President Trump. They've lived through his presidency. They've heard these arguments about democracy, about the fate of the election. And yet Trump is not only winning, but winning. For those of you listening, the congresswoman is having a serious hair malfunction. And I mean serious and very serious. It sounds like you're talking about saying and doing all the same things. But do you believe that something needs to change? Uh, I think we need to keep working. The White House was caught in yet another lie. They originally claimed Biden hadn't seen a neurologist specializing in Parkinson's disease outside of his regular physicals. Now they're claiming he had an additional visit from the neurologist separate from his physical back in January. The Cook Political Report has their latest electoral college forecast, and it shows things moving red. Arizona is going from a toss-up to leaning R. Georgia is going the same way, toss-up to leaning R. And Minnesota is going from likely Democrat to leaning Democrat. Nebraska, too, is going from likely D to leaning D. And New Hampshire is going from likely D to leaning D. Nevada is going from toss-up 
to leaning R. This is not their final forecast, but Cook Political Report touts their final forecasts as having no less than 90% accuracy in the last 40 years. Some rando named Tyler Kincaid at NBC News is aghast that Steve is on a board of advisors along with David Barton of Wall Builders, Kevin Roberts of the Heritage Foundation, and others to Oklahoma Superintendent of Public Instruction Ryan Walters in his effort to overhaul the state's curriculum on social studies. Walters made the announcement yesterday saying in a statement, quote, it's crystal clear that we need to return to more rigorous social studies standards that emphasize the unique and exceptional nature of the American Republic, promote a proper understanding of the nation's founding, and instill pride in our civic traditions and Oklahoma heritage. Checking in on Colorado Governor Jared Polis, who posted on X, who posted on X, who posted on X the following, quote, none of my intelligent 130 plus IQ friends use X or Twitter. They only read accurate, vetted news sources and almost never use social media spontaneously in their own time. This has been the long-term consistent observation, but today confirmation came. A new meta-analysis showed time using X or Twitter increases exponentially with lower IQ, with drop-off to near zero at 145-plus IQ. X or Twitter is mostly appealing as a way to fill an otherwise vacant mind that has no interesting thoughts and minimal goal-directed behavior. Intelligent people find stimulation from thinking about problems and doing things, not from marinating in vaguely unpleasant tweets like a soggy potato sitting in oil in a dirty oven tray, end quote. Again, that's the governor of Colorado posting that on X. In the state of California, rainbow jihad activists are opposing a new bill that would make solicitation of prostitution of a minor a felony. Yes, you heard that right. Here's why one activist at the California State Capitol recently is justifying her opposition to that bill. We believe that SB 1414 takes an overly punitive approach that fails to address the root causes of these issues and will not effectively stop sexual violence. We are particularly concerned that the harsher penalties proposed in this bill will disproportionately impact marginalized communities, especially members of the LGBTQ community, who already suffer from systematic biases within the criminal justice system, particularly when it comes to sexually based offenses. Studies have shown that LGBTQ people, particularly gay and transgendered individuals, are more likely to be charged with sex offenses compared to their heterosexual counterparts. Did she say what I think she just said? Yes, she did. She opposes this bill because rainbow jihadists are more likely to be charged with sex crimes than heterosexuals. Can't make this stuff up. And finally, a palate cleanser. We go to the state of Wisconsin. What you're about to watch and hear is an 18-year high school coach who recently told his school board he's going to be the first to sue Wisconsin's Somerset School District in St. Croix County if they implement Biden's Title IX rewrite. And I'm ashamed to be in front of this board to talk about this. That this is an issue. It's disgusting. The biggest threat to us here is our Constitution. There's an evil force out there that is attacking our Constitution, trying to break it down. Everybody here has a First Amendment right to do and be what you want to be, to religiously preach and, and receive your God in the way you believe, to be who you want to be. That's your right. But don't push it on me. My right is to do what I want to do. I'm actually sick and tired of this. I've interviewed some of these school board members and said to them, here's some of the books we have here. Can you read it to me? They didn't want to. It's a slippery slope. It started with the books in our school library. I asked my son who graduated from here two years ago. He goes, yeah, we knew they were there. We didn't read them. We're talking trucks, fishing, and hunting. That's what I want my boys talking about. And what the girls want to talk about is good. I, can, I want them to be girls. I want them to be boys. I want them to have a life in the school system where they're safe. And you let this stuff into this school, I guarantee I'll be the first lawsuit against you. <laughs> 18 years of coaching high school sports and working the programs, it's like, what a joke. I can't even believe it's on the agenda. Stand up, Somerset, and demand the rest of the state to follow us and end this crap. Because it's our Constitution that's under attack and they're breaking it down little by little by all this strange stuff. I almost swore. But I'm telling you, it's over. Otherwise, you'll find my name on the first lawsuit. Amen. And that's what happened while we were away. Amen indeed. May his house increase. And good to see that that's an actual man doing that for a change. 
Aaron's Montage brought to you by our friends at Relief Factor. If you are thinking there's just nothing I can do, I, I'm, I'm never going to get over this chronic pain. That may not be the case. We can't guarantee you anything, but over the years, over 1 million people have tried the three-week quick start with Relief Factor. They saw such great results. In three weeks or less, they stuck around long-term 70% of the time. Those are pretty good odds, especially when we're just asking for 20 bucks. So it's a drug-free supplement, but it was created by physicians who can prescribe drugs, but they wanted to come up with something drug-free that would go after the chronic pain that's at, or go after the inflammation that's causing the chronic pain that, you know, uh, drugs will just uh, mask that. They wanted to get rid of what's causing the chronic pain, the inflammation in the first place. What do you got to lose for 20 bucks to see if you don't see a difference in your pain in three weeks or less when you go to relieffactor.com. Try the three-week quick start for just 20 bucks at relieffactor.com. Um, to Aaron's montage, we go. I, I have no idea what my current IQ is. It's been like 30 years since I've taken an IQ test, and I don't even remember what the score was. Okay. Um, and so I, I, I have no idea if I have as good of an IQ as the openly homosexual governor of Colorado does. But I do know this. I'm at least smart enough to know why God made the male anus. Which is a great segue to something that I want to, uh, an honor that uh, I, w- I was gladly willing to accept. Um, and, and when my good friend, uh, Oklahoma, hold on, pause put there for a second. I want to, is anybody, is can, anybody can still I, working I, at I, Media I, Matters or is it, are they going to AI this later? Not just the male anus, the anus. In I general? Just, yes. Okay. All right. Fair. Just need to make that. <laughs> okay. That's, that's correction. Fair. Okay. Um, so I just wanted to mark the tape because that, because Media Matters just wanted, they got, we're making a tough segue for them here by bringing these things up back to back. So let the, you know, because they laid off a bunch of people. So if they're real humans there, they got the backups in, right? Okay, so... Their mainframe is just smoking yeah, over there. They've got just... the English as a second language, folks. And I think we've given them enough time. They've they jotted down what I said this, just a minute ago. Because this is the part that will definitely make the weekend update over there. Um, I want to thank my good friend Ryan Walters, the outstanding superintendent of Oklahoma schools. Uh, a couple of weeks ago, uh, he reached out to me and asked me if I would be willing to serve on a task force to undo the damage uh, that the spirit of the age has done to the social studies curriculum in particular in the state of Oklahoma for decades, one of the reddest states in the union. And I was just honored to be asked, proud to serve my country this way, uh, and gleefully accepted. And, uh, and when you look at the A-team that, uh, that Mr. Walters has put together from Dennis Prager to uh, David Barton to the, health, the, to the Heritage Foundation, um, I mean, how could you say no to that? So... Um, looking forward to undoing that damage, looking forward to making sure uh, that the young schools full of mush there in uh, the Sooner State, uh, that they are able to learn actual American history and civics again. And, uh, and, and we'll make Oklahoma social studies curricula, we'll make it great again. I promise you that we will do that. And if you are in a similar state, and I'm open, uh, if you would like me to serve on a task force for you, Steve at stevedays.com. Feel free to reach out. Um, ask not what your country can do for you, but what you can do for your country. So I am, I am honored to stand and serve my country in this capacity. So thank you. All right, let's get to the rest of Aaron's montage. Um, you have Sherrod Brown coming out now and just uh, the senator from Ohio who's up for re-election. Um, he's coming out now in the last hour saying that Trump, ha- or, I'm sorry, that Biden has to go. He can't win re-election because he's looking at the Cook political report and realizing he's going to lose a U.S. Senate seat that he should win. We were probably looking at Trump winning Ohio from anywhere to five to ten points prior to the debate. And Sherrod Brown could probably survive that as an incumbent senator. Can't survive Trump winning 15 to 20 points, though can't survive that and we're looking at that right now we're looking at trump winning ohio by 15 to 20 points and he can't survive that so that's why he wants biden to go now you have george clooney remember the clip you saw a few weeks ago of uh, obama having to hold biden's hand and walk him off the stage well one of the hosts of that event was george clooney there's a photo that he and julia roberts took with obama and biden after that event now, George Clooney has come out to say the, the Biden that I saw at that event three weeks ago was not the Biden of 2020. It was the Biden of that debate. He can't win re-election. He has to go. The comedians now, now sicking their left wing comedians on Joe Biden. 
is a big step. And that's what I want to talk about here for a second, because we're on we're on day 13 of escape from Joe Biden. It's the it's the 42nd anniversary, 42nd anniversary of the release of Escape from New York, one of the great 80s schlock movies ever. Right. You remember that one. OK, so let's pay some pay it some homage, shall we? So we're on we're on day 13 now of Escape from Joe Biden It was 13 days ago that this debate took place. And what's happened is we have now reached the end of DEFCON 2. We're at the end of DEFCON 2. And DEFCON 2 was triggered with the Parkinson stuff. And they did a great job of, of stealing Alex Berenson's work on that and giving him no credit and claiming it for, them, for them, themselves. So remember that whole seg- segment on uh, fake news or not we did yesterday? Same as it ever was. Yes. Yes. Okay. But they, they then took his work they didn't give him credit for and then elevated it, right? The, the doctor they brought on. Oh, no, that was definitely Parkinson's. You could see it a mile away. Okay. So they, they, DEFCON 2 was you have Parkinson's and have to go. And Parkinson's is a debilitating disease that often does lead to dementia. Saw it with my own father-in-law, sadly. And, and then the, 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 the twin shot of DEFCON 2 was now the all clear was given that their pop culture icons are now clear now have been given clearance from the tower to come and speak out like George Clooney's done today uh, to mock Biden like the Tonight Show just did with with uh, Jimmy Fallon that 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 that's a big statement a step for them. OK, now, if you're in Todd and I's generation or older, you were used to these shows that tilted left just, ra- you know, destroying politicians in either party on a consistent basis. Right. That that's not what's gone on here for the last 10, 15 years. These right. are these things. These people have become partisan animals. They're part now of the of the machine. OK. And so the fact that the the Matrix made the call and now the all clear was given to to point their guns now at Biden indicates that that we're now towards the end of DEFCON 2. And with the Democrat media industrial complex and you, I forgot I forgot this Nancy Pelosi came out this morning and refused to endorse Biden running again after saying like the day after. OK. She went out there, or no, it was two days or three days after she went out there on one of the Sunday morning shows and stuttered and stammered and dementioned herself through Biden is our nominee. We have to support him. And now she's saying, you know, he shouldn't. I, I, she refused to endorse the idea of him running again. So what's happening here is this is a this is the same kind of campaign that you saw pulled on Trump to get him to lock the country down, which he uh, unfortunately fell for. And we're all still paying the consequences for that, including Trump. I mean, he's never been closer than ever to going to prison because he listened to them and locked the country down and let them ballot harvest him out of office. So they've been putting this same exact jamming plan. And what is jamming again? There was a great book written by a guy named David Capellian, who was at World Net Daily back when that website was a thing. He wrote a book about uh, 20 years ago called The Marketing of Evil. You all should read it. It's phenomenal. OK, and he talks about a, a, a process called jamming, and it's where all of the various resources that the left brings to bear institutionally and culturally all jam the, the, the airwaves and the, and the arena of ideas with the exact same message to make it feel make you feel like everyone thinks this way. And you see this in comments sections and, you know, when those were a thing and in chat rooms when those were a thing. OK, that it, and you saw this under old Twitter when they were rigging it, okay, that all the hashtags trending every day look like the DNC talking points. That's jamming, okay? That's jamming. And it's designed to make you feel like, well, I got I mean, no one else thinks like me. I'm a loser. I'm an idiot. I can't speak up. Or I should, you know, I, I want to be one of the cool kids, so I need to change what I think. They have, been, they have used this jamming on the Bidens for the last 13 days. Steadily increasing the pressure. The problem they've had is the Bidens are also members in good, well, they no, no longer in good standing, but for many years they were members in good standing of the exact same Democrat media complex. And the Bidens as a family have essentially decided that spending another 190 days in the White House is preferable to them uh, than risking Donald Trump spending the next four years there. And so they will not be shamed. They're, they, they have dug in their heels, them against the world. Furthermore, they made the, the extremely brazen move that I don't think the machine saw coming, 
of taking their crack smoking whoremongering son whom Biden's own Department of Justice is about to put into prison and bringing him into the White House in almost this like Rasputin type of role in, in really a move that frankly if we're being honest give credit where it's due that goes in the white trash hall of fame uh, Jill makes the call can you get, I know you're on top of some uh, human trafficked Russian right now, but we need you. I, I mean, that's literally what occurred. Okay, literally. Okay. Uh, so, you know, give yourself a shave, brush your teeth, and uh, come on in. I mean, that, that's, you know, there's a saying in Florida, the further uh, north you go, the further south it gets. Okay. It turns out that's true in New England and in Delaware. All right. The further north you go, the further south it gets. I mean, this is this is a hold my beer redneck move. I mean, this is absolutely pure white trash. Let me call in my whoremongering crack smoking son on his way to prison to hold the line. All right. I'm not making any of this up. If you think I am, go watch the clown college of what's her nuts adjusting her hair and her wig on the air. Okay. I believe it's called a weaves. Yeah. We're not, we're not, we're not this. None of this is even slightly embellished guys. None of it is. Okay. Truth is indeed not just stranger than fiction. It's also more hilarious. So what will transpire the end of this week is up until now, you know, I've mentioned that prior to the debate, the driving negative force in this election cycle is a majority of the American people don't want to have to vote for Donald Trump again. And then the debate switched that. And now the other negative force is the driving impetus. Now, a majority of the American people think Joe Biden is too old to vote for. Okay. This has happened on a micro level within this inter Nicene fight. Up until now, it has been the machine trying to prompt the Bidens into making the determinative mood move. And the Bidens have called their bluff. We're now at the point now that the Bidens are compelling the machine to make the determinative move. What's the determinative move? What is DEFCON 1? I'll tell you what I think DEFCON 1 is. DEFCON 1 is a very somber Merrick Garland approaches the Attorney General of the United States, approaches the camera. And has audio and footage of the deposition that Robert Hur, the independent counsel, took with Joe Biden when he testified under oath to the U.S. Congress that he did not recommend indictment for Biden because he just thought this was such a feeble old man that a, a jury would be sympathetic of him and he couldn't he couldn't prosecute him. And then you are with the, with the full auspices of the Department of Justice, you are exposed. Normie America, you, you're already exposed. If you're listening to this show, you already know this stuff. I'm talking about the normies who just found out June 27th Biden has dementia. George Clooney, who apparently just found out three weeks ago, George, that Joe Biden has dementia. It took him three weeks to tell us this, okay? So I'm not talking about us. Don't send me your notes. I know you know. And if you don't know, I'm doing a bad job, okay? I know you know. We're not talking about you. We're talking about the whole rest of America that's not watching people like us. They're about to be, they don't even know who Robert Hur is. They're like, isn't that movie Charlton Heston was in? That's Ben Hur. It's Ben Hur. Ben. Great movie, by the way. Okay. So they're going to get introduced to Robert Hur. H-U-R. And they're going to think those are his pronouns. No, it's his last name. H-U-R. They're going to get introduced to Robert Hur via Merrick Garland, who is concerned at the president's escalating incapacity and fitness for office, and therefore, on the basis of this evidence from the independent counsel and what he has witnessed himself over the last few weeks, he regrets, he doesn't want to have to do this, but um, he regrets recommending from the Department of Justice that the administration invoke the 25th Amendment against Joe Biden. That's DEFCON 1. And it may take going there to uproot the Bidens. And now what the system has to figure out is if it's willing to, it's willing to go Chicago way to quote the great movie that Todd loves, The Untouchables. It's done it the D.C. way, and it would would have worked on any Republican within 10 seconds. And it probably would have even worked on a a newer, younger Democrat. You know, but understand, Joe Biden's been a part of this machine. The Bidens have been a part of this machine pretty much longer than you and I have been alive. Todd, literally, okay? And we're in our 50s. So, you know, this is, they know this playbook. They've been running it too. For decades. So, they've dug in. 
like the Romanovs, and they've even turned to Rasputin, like the Romanovs. So what, did, what got rid of the Romanovs, you remember? A Bolshevik revolution. And that's what it'll take to get rid of the Bidens. Are they willing to go full Bolshevik here? But, but not necessarily in the way that Lenin did to the Romanovs, but in a way Stalin did to Trotsky. You got to go. You're in the way. That's what they're mulling over right now. Because they have, they, they, they are up against, this has been, this, this, this saying has been given to many people over the years. It originates actually with Oliver Cromwell. And he said it with a much more uh, panache than the panache that it is said with these days. But if you're going to come at a king, best not miss. And that's why he took the king of England, stripped him of his monarchical title, referred to him as his Christian name, and brought him out in front of the crowd to show him he's just a man like everybody else. And then he beheaded him. That's what I believe they are mulling over right now. Do they have the stones to do to, to Biden now what they know Trump is going to do later? What they know Trump is going to do later. This is the perfect campaign for Trump. He doesn't have to talk about a singular issue the whole time. Doesn't get, get in the weeds of any policy. The whole thing is a troll. It's in his wheelhouse. He is a master at the simplistic message and hammering it home and coming up with new ways to keep bringing it back and rehammering it home. Trust me, went up against this every day for six months on the cruise campaign. I know what it's like to be on the receiving end of this. And it hurts. Okay. All right. Bad, in fact. All right. And that's when you have a candidate who's like barely 40 and alert, let alone one who doesn't know what, you know, planet he's on. That's what they're debating right now. And it'll be, I, and I don't honestly know. I, I, if I still had to wager, I'd wager Biden won't survive, but I really don't know how this will play out now over the next five days. I don't know. And, and they're all over the place. I mean, you got Hakeem Jeffries coming out saying Biden's our nominee, Nancy Pelosi, then his, his forerunner won't back Biden, okay? You've got Ocasio-Cortez saying we have to back Biden. Now you got George Clooney coming out saying he's got to go. I mean, they are not of one mind on this. And, and in the meantime, I've, here's my best advice. Grab your popcorn. Best movie of the year. Well, except for Dune 2. Dune 2 is still better than this. But it's close. It's close. Gentlemen, your thoughts. Well, this reminds me, I think your, your best advice regarding uh, the uh, Queers for Palestine tearing down liberal universities. You know, you wrote that column. I don't know what was that. It seems like a lifetime ago. It does seem like it was 10 Couple years ago. A couple months ago, whatever. I think it was in May. I know. <laughs> yeah. But the same thing applies here. Like this, this is, this is a symphony. That you they made this bed. Oh, and isn't it cozy? Now sleep in it. Choke on that comforter. Oh, man. I, I, to, again, to give the ring of power to this guy, you don't just take it back. It doesn't work the same in reverse, guys. You got to cut his finger off. You neck, yes, you necromanced him, but yeah. like, you, there's no way to do this but going to De DEFCON 1 to get him out. And if you go to DEFCON 1, DEFCON 1, you know as well as anybody that it's likely that you're out too, that there's no way to not have a, a second coming of Donald Trump on this thing. And who knows what that means after that in terms of, you know, Trumpistan in general. So you deserve it, all of you. I have remarked to you, both of you, off the air, multiple occasions over the past um, probably six months or so, maybe seven months, that it is really, really creepy, really creepy when you take into account the lawfare, the uh, tugging of the strings, the pulling of the strings, the puppeteers um, kind, of, kind of way of going about things, that this was exactly orchestrated, exactly down to the every jot and tittle to set up a Trump versus Biden rematch. It was orchestrated perfectly. It was going perfectly according to plan. And I thought that was creepy. I'm now comforted that finally something, a fly has gotten into the ointment. I'm comforted by that because now at least we've got some entertainment. <laughs> nice.
you know, there are those who lead and those who follow. And when it comes to getting involved in the let's go Brandon real estate market during these unprecedented times, Bing. you definitely want to make sure you are going with a leader. And we want to give you one of those agents you can trust to lead you to the outcome you want, whether you're moving across town or you're moving across the country. We've got your hookup and the website says it all. Go to realestateagentsitrust.com. That's realestateagentsitrust.com. And we'll get you hooked up with an agent that has been fully validated and verified with a track record of success, best practices, integrity, et cetera. A lot of times they're going to be from right here in the same blaze audience that you're a part of. So, you know, you guys have values in common as well. So head over there now before you venture forth into an era where mortgage payments are 100% more than they were four years ago. Realestateagentsitrust.com. Again, head over to realestateagentsitrust.com. And with that, with that, it is time for this week's buy, sell, or hold. Aaron has submissions from all of you. Todd, you and I have yet to see any of these submissions. We'll see them all, what Aaron has selected in real time. We'll get through as many of these during the show as we can. The ones we could not get to, we will deal with in the overtime for Blaze TV subscribers at blazetv.com slash dace. Of course, you buy it if you're buying it. Sell it if you're selling it. If you choose to hold, however, if you choose to hold, then you have betrayed the dude code, you have demonstrated unnecessary weakness. And as a result, your penalty is you will have to see for yourself what Lindsey Graham does in the back rooms of the Republican National Convention next week. Is he that out? Do I really? Is that's, there, why, is there that's why it's in the back room. Is there? Brother. Oh. It's in the back well, room. You've said who, they, they invited some. Who's this chick they invited? So uh, I mean, Am, is, uh, it's something Rose. What's her first name, Aaron? Yeah, Angel. Am, oh no, it's Amber. Amber. Yeah. Okay. Is this like it's the, just some, it's some porn star? Is this like the pride parades? Do the does the GOP have kink rooms now? Is this what's going on? I mean, on? Uh, she does what I'm. I'm. I, I read yesterday. I'd never heard of her, uh, but uh, she does a uh, something called the slut walk. And in 2018, she was posting that Trump was a sexual predator. So it's good times. Good times had by all. Fickle. All right, Aaron, go ahead. We will begin with D.C., who says Bruce Jenner will serve in the Trump administration as Trump's newly created LGBTQ (laughs) plus rights czar. We did not plan it this way. Bye. We're starting with this. This is the lead in. No warm up. Wait till the next one. No, not even a kiss. And I love you. You look, you look, you look pretty. Nothing, nothing. We're just going right to this. Bye. I'm going to sell because that appointment will go to Caitlyn Jenner and make a note of that. Aaron Reale is next. Christy Noam's social media went dark because she's preparing to rebrand herself for the VP position as the abortion grandma. Oh my gosh, come on, man. Who has had to make this difficult choice numerous times, and it will be met with crickets from the right. Bye. Do I have a full hour of this? Yep. And then no Daniel. And then Daniel. No, yeah. no, one's, <laughs> yeah. no one's got a list of, you know, rock songs or sporting events. Nothing. We're going to do this. I don't know if oh, I we can got keep, a little bit of that. I don't know if I can keep this pace up the entire so time. So it will be to fulfill all righteousness. <laughs> Again, I will sell because there is no way Christy Noem, she didn't put herself through all of the mechanical adjustments that have been made to be identified as any form of grandma. So this whole dentist thing is starting to make sense, though. I'm sure this this whole present VP thing started back then, and Trump probably pulled her aside and said. You know, I'm dog. I'm down with the dog killing stuff, but you got to take care of those teeth. And I, I, I think things were in motion a long time ago. All right, hold on a second. Hold on. I told you guys before the show, I am getting as many Google alerts about this appointment from Ryan Walters in Oklahoma as like anything in my entire career. All right, remember I told you guys this. Okay, I I just got now, um, uh, Maddow's blog is writing about it referring to me as quote a far right media personality end quote i'm i'm sure by the end of the day you're going to be one of the planks in whatever this movement 2025 thing is like steve dace rewrites curriculum 
But it's called Project 2025. Is that what it is? Uh, maybe they might even accuse me of being uh, Candace Owens' inspiration for her nuanced views on Hitler, apparently. See, I can play this game, too. Let's continue. This day's going well. <laughs> I can play this game, too. But you, you might regret you poked the bear. I'm just telling you. But all right. <laughs> Carry forth. <laughs> Next, Timothy Stevens. <laughs> The GOP has been split between those who use power to serve principle and those who feign principle to obtain power. Now that the unprincipled have won, the GOP will soon be nothing more than a different brand of tyranny. I will sell. Uh, again. You're giving him too much credit. You're giving him too much credit. The GOP... I, man. This isn't new. It's arguably worse, but it is not new. This wasn't a conservative party before Trump. No one cared what was in the platform, and they they put up they let the conservatives write whatever they wanted, and then just screwed the conservatives over in the entire rest of the process and let Republicans do whatever they want. You guys heard this show from like 2006 to 2016, right? Yes. This is not new. This was. No one remembers George W. Bush saying, I am suspending free market principles to save the free market. No one remembers George H. W. Bush winning an election on read my lips, no new taxes, then getting in the White House and signing the worst tax increase in American history at the time. No one remembers these things. No one remembers this stuff. No, no one remembers that Stephen Schmidt, MSNBC fixture, was John McCain's national campaign manager. He ran the McCain 08 campaign. Yeah. And long before Melania Trump decided that the log cabin Republicans were her pet cause, they were the McCain's pet cause. In fact, Stephen Schmidt in the, during the 2008 election went and gave a speech to the log cabin Republicans telling them your day is going to come under John McCain. Which if you say that to a group like the log cabin Republicans, you better finish that sentence because they may take that in an entirely different meaning. So this is not new. Mitt Romney wouldn't eat a freaking chicken sandwich. Yeah. Okay. He's- on because he didn't want to get in the middle of the rainbow jihad and 12 years ago this isn't new you weren't part of a conservative party before now trump is currently moving the party to the left that is true but it is actually to the left of of where he mo- where he moved it to the right previously the republican party was to the right in 2016 dude after they lost in 2012 Reince Priebus came out with a, what did, what did they call it? What was his report? The, uh, was it the obituary? It was, they called it something. You remember this? About how Romney lost? Like Post-mortem? A, yeah, some kind, it was some kind of an official title they gave this report. I don't remember. After they blew millions? Yeah. Where they bragged that they still had hundreds of millions of dollars in the bank in an election they lost. Okay. Why didn't you spend it, numb nuts? All right. They came out with some kind of postmortem obituary. I don't know what they called it. And the argument basically was we have to become like Democrats. Marco Rubio called me on the phone in the spring of 2015 personally to try to get me to advocate for a mass amnesty program that would just essentially give Democrats permanent control of the Electoral College and, and California, Texas. This isn't new, guys. It's not. What's different is Trump ran to the right of all the people I just talked about, moved the party to the right. So the party went from, we have to do amnesty to uh, get rid of the uh, drug mules and murderers and, and criminals. Mexico is sending us and build a wall, right? That, that, he moved it to the right, right? And then is moving it back to the left where it was before he took over. Now that's happening. Okay, he's essentially taking the Republican Party to where it was before he took it over. That's why I've compared this more to Mitt Romney 2012, just with Trump's persona. And, and, and two of the three people that are most prominently mentioned for VP, Doug Burgum doesn't know what a woman is. And Marco Rubio doesn't know what a damn border is, okay? Rubio was the candidate that Trump mocked the most in 2016, by the way. Little Marco. And Marco tried to come back with the hand comments that, you know, everything else and all that just fell on its face and he went out of the race. And then the other guy, Vance, actually has some of, actually believes in some of Trump's viewpoints on the MAGA agenda, but then also came out on Sunday and said, that company that makes Zyklon B for Jews in the 40s, we sh- they're making uh, uh, an abortion drug now in the 2020s and let's make sure everybody's got access to that. 
this party wasn't some conservative Valhalla in 2013, guys. Or in 2008, or in 2007. You're all wrong about this. And I know this is alienating some of the very people who joined our show because of how much we admire Ron DeSantis and how supportive we were of him in the primary. All I care about is the truth. You're all wrong about this. There's a reason why. In fact, you're you're countering your own narrative. Why does Ron DeSantis, why did he have to move the Florida Republican Party to the right? Because I'm right. That's why. Dude, he just got reelected by 20 points. He is still vetoing crap they're sending his way. They sent him another jailbreak bill. They sent him another bill. Hey, let's let's fund all the uh, arts projects of, of, of with rot guts from billionaires with people sticking, uh, you know, vases up their ass and calling it art. Was no one alive, Todd, from 2007 until Trump arrived? Did he break? Literally, is everyone's brain broken by Trump except this show from 11 to 1? I'm asking. Is everyone else's brains broke? Nearly. Because some yes. days I feel like everyone else's brains are broke other than mine. I feel that way. Like nothing happened. but Like it's AT and BT. After Trump, before Trump. Almost all of you on every side of this are wrong. Because you see everything through Trump primarily and interpret events through him rather than interpreting events and applying them to Trump. You look at Trump isogetically, not exegetically. Trump is not making any events happen. He's not God. He's not the word of God. He is the result of the things that have occurred and are occurring. It's the other way around. This was not some safe harbor place. Yeah, I feel sorry for that little old lady in Utah who spent a crap ton of money out of her own pocket to be a Republican National Committee woman only to get rolled. By the way, you notice, do you guys know how, there's, there's, there, you know how many members there are, how many Republican National Committee people there are? Two in every state. Man and a woman. Where have the other uh, 198 been? Have you seen them? You, you, you heard from the Republican National Committee men and women in our state? Have, have, have our own Republican National Committee and committee women came out and said, hey, this wasn't right what they did with the pro-life plank. Hear the word? No. Not a quiet as kept. The people are the problem, not Trump. The people are the problem. This party hated you before he showed up. In all of his imperfections, he's actually on a national level been the only figure since Ronald Reagan left the White House in January of 1989 that has actually given us any time of day at all. Now, I admit he is going the full Vader. I am altering the deal. Pray I don't alter it any further. That's happening now. But that is not what happened before. He moved the party to the right. Every Republican promised us they were going to overturn Roe. Trump did it. Every Republican promised, promised us they were going to recognize Jerusalem as the capital. Trump did it. He moved the party to the right. Now, he is putting it right back to where it was before he took over. And that's, I've got that I have a problem with. But this was not a great place for conservative. Mitch McConnell was running the party before Trump showed up. This was not a great place for us. And all the arguments we're having right now about whether you can vote for Trump again, we all had them all in 2008 and 2012. The difference is Trump's just much more of a scandal-ridden figure on a personal level than either Romney or McCain were. But no one has ever backstabbed us more than John McCain ever has in high office, ever. And he got rewarded by being named the Republican nominee the very next cycle. There's nothing new under the sun. If we do not understand this, you won't be able to change it. You, you cannot fix a problem that you don't correctly diagnose. I was saying the only party that hates us more than the Democrats are the Republicans long before I got a phone call one day from an unknown number and it was unknown caller and it was Donald Trump. 
The Tea Party was in response to the TARP, which took place under Bush. Again, was anyone else alive from 2006 to 2016? Did everybody just take the COVID jabs from 2006 to 16? Yeah, probably. And just yeah, cognitively impaired. To quote one of my favorite clips from NFL films, what the hell is going on out there? What is going on? Stop letting Trump break your brain. Stop. He's not the Antichrist and he's not your God. And when this is all said and done, he'll be a largely irrelevant figure. The one constant through all the year, Ray, all the years, Ray, is the people. The people suck. Do we have any listeners left, do you think, after that? No. I'll try to drive the rest of I agree with nearly every word of that, and it's important you bring up the DeSantis uh, comparison because I, I, I'm the guy who points out I, evangelicals voted for this by a two-to-one margin. But it, I'm, when I'm saying that, I'm not saying they voted for too much fascism. Uh, excuse me, tyranny is the word he used. I think you're saying the same thing. I, I, I'm begging for Trump to be as tyrannical as DeSantis. That's my point. DeSantis knows what his power is and he uses it. That's one of my biggest problems with Trump. I fear he's going to get elected and, and just end up being used and abused like he was during COVID. That's why Steve is absolutely right about all of this. You have you you really expect and are worried about tyranny. This is the people on my side who supported DeSantis uh, like I did and are as disappointed and remain as disappointed. We have two different fears, apparently. I just think he's going to put it on cruise control. You can you cannot analyze anything in this world, including the former and current state of the Republican Party, using a lens from 2005. You just cannot. You can't. Stop. I see too many people who are like stuck back in 2003, 2004, 2005. It's a new world, man. It changed a long time uh, before we thought it did, but it was confirmed for everybody in 2020 and onwards. Update your stinking thinking. We're going to have more buy, seller, hold next. And we are back here with hour two. I feel great. Buy seller hold's gone well so far. I mean, I'm. You were concerned out of the gate, but you 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 rallied. I mean, my energy level is usually pretty high on a lifting day. I lift on Monday, Wednesdays, and Fridays. And you know, after uh, some of the excellent propositions we were given to open buy seller hold, I think we got through two of them. Aaron, correct? Two. Uh, yeah, something like yeah, that. Yeah, I mean, that's how good those were. And so, I mean, I I'm on that uh, lifting high again. I mean, the endorphins have kicked in. So I want to thank you guys. We're off to a great start. Let us know what you think about what we think. Via the SteveDace.com inbox, you can email us, Steve at SteveDace.com. That's D-E-A-C-E. Like us on Facebook, MeWe, and Gab. You can follow me at Steve Dace Show on Twitter, Gitter, Instagram, and TikTok. And then don't forget, although today may not be the best day to be bringing this up, but that's how we roll. If you love the show and you listen to the podcast version, by all means, uh, give us a five-star review. Thank you to all of you that have demonstrated you have a lot of I mean, you have, you have a lot of inner strength. I mean, you've got some real toughness enduring this enough to give us a five-star review. So thank you for that. Uh, and then also um, make sure to hit subscribe or follow if you're on iTunes. And that makes sure that every time we do a new episode, it will end up in your feed every single time. And you never know. We keep doing more um, uh, rants like I just went on. You never know when those new episodes might air. <laughs> right? So... <laughs> Make sure your RSS feed is connected to ours. All right. Uh, this part of the show brought to you by our friends over at Freedom Project Academy. Um, I mean, I can't give them a better endorsement than I, I let them educate my own son, Noah, for a couple of years. And they did a fantastic job. And it's quite possible, if not likely, that Noah would have ended up finishing there 
uh, through the end of his uh, his scholastic career, if not for some of his extracurricular interest and why we put him in another outstanding school over at Des Moines Christian. So they do great work. Um, they have perfected online learning, offering live on-demand homeschool courses focused on a classical curriculum undergirded by Judeo-Christian values, K through 12, fully accredited as well. Critical thinking means your kids will be taught how to think and not what to think. And right now you can save 10% on tuition when you enroll at freedom for for freedom for school.com. That's freedom for school.com. You can save 10% on tuition right now and check out their fully accredited courses, teachers, preview classes, and request a free information kit. If you're not quite ready to sign on, you want more information, do that too at freedom for school.com. Do not hand over another generation to Satan's youth ministry. Freedomforschool.com. That's freedomforschool.com. All right, let's get to it, Aaron. Uh, more buy, sell, or hold. I don't know how much more woe and lamentation y'all can take after what I just dropped, but uh, I'm sure Daniel will not oh, disappoint here in about 30 minutes. After all this, Daniel's the palate cleanser. That's fantastic. <laughs> Next, we go to Cheap Deepfake, who says uh, if Biden won't step aside, they're going to Epstein him. Uh, Cheap Deepfake says he's torn because it seems suspicious yet also completely believable that he just died. All right. Can I ask for a point of order? Legally, can we comment on this? I didn't even think that's what they meant by Epstein him at the beginning when I thought it was going to be like they're going to release a list and say his name was on it or something like that. You actually meant the jail part. Yeah. No, I meant the I mean, the hashtag part. If you know what I'm trying yeah, to yeah, say. Yeah, okay, yeah. yeah, yeah. So I'm, I'm not sure we can even legally comment on this. I mean... Do, do, do we have a point of order on this? I don't know that we can. Well, if the answer is anything other than yes, then that's probably a no. Okay. So does that mean we all have to subject, subject ourselves to Lindsey Graham at the back room at the convention if we just hold here for legal purposes? Or do we get a... Let's ask the Catholic, Aaron. Do we get a, dispensa- a papal dispensation for this? Do you know? How's that work? Don't drag that into this. No, no, no. This will not be solid. <laughs> I, I legally don't think I can answer that. So I'm just, I'm, I have no comment. Fair enough, no? I have no comment. Vince says, all the clicking that we hear Steve do is actually him playing the popular 90s windy, Windows game Minesweeper. No, it's way more annoying than that. And I hated that game. So, so... <laughs> I've never heard of that game. Really? I, I was never into that. Never into Tetris. No, I I need games that like you know have graphics and do stuff. No, not my thing. It's really just a, I'm I'm that annoying and unprofessional. Next, Patrick says the only long term hope for the Republican Party and its voters at this point is a exponential growth in support of the State Freedom Caucus Network and b increased state sovereignty. Hundred percent buy and agree. I think at this point. Uh, Washington is District 1, the capital. Um, and I think that's really the best hope uh, that, that the GOP offers to continue being any form of a viable opposition. And it's why I've said many times in my career, I, I, the only office I am tempted to run for is governor, because I think that is that is moving forward. Uh, unless you can get a Josiah-like figure in the White House and... In my view, the uh, the Republican primary electorate just demonstrated uh, here in this cycle, it doesn't want one of those, or at least not yet. So barring something like that, governor's the most consequential office in the country. I'm all in on part B. I'm, I'm very scared. I mean, Freedom Caucus stuff. I don't know. It ultimately, what has it really... I, I know some people have tried, but I'm not. You can pretty I mean, much even I, let's. I mean, I can think of one example off the top of my head, and it it sticks out to me because it sticks out based on the on the state that we're talking about here. But my understanding is is that the South Carolina State Freedom Caucus has actually had quite a bit of sway, so much so that the establishment has tried yep. to launch uh, various uh, sundry campaigns in order to discredit Freedom Caucus South Carolina members. I think the Freedom Caucus was instrumental in South Carolina. Again, this sticks out because of what state I'm talking about here and the senators and congresswomen or people that they produced. Uh, they were instrumental in, uh, the, I think, the heartbeat bill uh, that was uh, able to be passed down there as well, or whatever the pro-life legisl- legislation was. So I don't know. I, I like the idea of expanding State Freedom Caucus, but... Um, that state is still run by yeah. Tim Scott, Nancy Mace, Lindsey Graham jokes, etc. I mean, see, I, I, show me. 
show me i mean a lot of it it, it seems like it's just a uh a, an electoral jacket that you kind of permanently put on that you just point i'm in that i'm in that club at the end of the day and you know we're lazy and we just say okay freedom caucus yay i just need more all right, let's uh, take a break for a little bit. Jeffrey Preston Bezos' stay in account says Mount Rushmore of 1970s songs that utilized the banjo. Oh, <laughs> Squeeze box by The Who. I like that poll. You guys know I'm a big Who guy. I like that poll. That's a good poll. I don't know that that's, you know, that great of a, it, it's worthy of any Mount Rushmore at all. Okay, but since I'm impressed with that level of pull, I'm going to buy that. Take it easy by the Eagles. Yes, absolutely. Absolutely. Yep. First of all, just about any 70s song list that includes the Eagles is probably getting a buy. I mean, that, next to Led Zeppelin, they're the best selling band of that of that decade. Uh, Old Man by Neil Young. Yeah, that's okay. certainly memorable. Yeah, it and is. Uh, Rainbow Connection by Kermit the Frog. Moving on. That's a great pull. I love that poll too. Who was that? Jeffrey Preston Bezos Jeffrey, stand account. The the bookends of that list are impressive, my man. Um, the Rainbow Connection from the first Muppet movie is a tremendous song. Do you remember that song? Yes. That's a great song. I haven't thought about that in like thirty years, but it's a great tune, man. That was well done, man. I'm very impressed, Jeffrey. Thank you. Next week. Someday we'll find it, the rainbow no, no, connection. No, 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 no. We were good. I mean, you've got a better Kermit voice than me. We should, you want to do it? No. Ouch. No, no, okay. no, no, okay. no. Ow, that was a stray. Uh, Mr. Bob Dabalina says, Gladiator 2 will be a blockbuster hit movie. Is that the trailer you were watching yesterday, Steve? It was. And I'm not entirely sure what to think about it because it starts out pretty dope. And then all of a sudden it puts in some like rap song from the 90s and you're like, what? Why did this become the acolyte? Okay. You know, so I, I'm i not sure what I think. I loved the first half of the trailer. And then once that, you know, music kicked in and it's rap so I don't, from the 90s. So, you know, once we got any rap after like 92, I'm not really going to know any of it. So um, it's got Denzel. So I'm going to be there because, you know, I love Denzel, but that's what's weird about it. if it was not for Denzel's presence, I would just be asking a lot of why questions even before I saw the trailer. I just don't trust I, I, what why Hollywood does anything it does, which is why when you know just yesterday I have only seen one of the 10 movies on your list so far, Steve. It's just I, <laughs> there's a lot what do you of think just... of, what do you think of this idea because they they had an idea within shortly after remember gladiator is almost 25 years old that movie came out in 2000 yeah. it was best picture for the year 2000 yeah. and i think it's an all-time top 10 15 movie in my opinion and uh they had an immediate idea for a sequel and the immediate i see the idea for the sequel were going to be zeus calls forth maximus from hades to return and uh and 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 it, and uh that was real that was no. real that was their original That's the dumbest idea plan. i've ever heard that was the original plan is that zeus was going to call forth maximus from the grave oh okay God. from hades uh yeah. to uh, be a, essentially essentially a, an instrument of vengeance of righteous vengeance <laughs> that's so stupid which is probably why they didn't do it Okay, but that was the original idea. It didn't go anywhere. And then it took 20 years for them to come up with a script idea that they liked. Okay. And so this is, and it's, it's been very, un, you know, under wraps. No one even had a clue what the plot or anything was even close to being about who is going to be yeah. centered on. It looks like it's centered on Lucius, the kid, yeah. remember? The looks kid like it's grows up on him. and then they yeah. just, it looks, this looks like just um, Force Awakens. So it's, with it's, a bigger it's, Death Star, I it's mean, it's a redundancy. Just the, yes, yeah. I don't know. Like, and people are kid uh, on a say, on a sand planet that doesn't know his true hair, doesn't know their true heritage. Okay, and it, it just, I mean, yeah, yeah. Is it we? And we're here. We are. This is what I'm. Uh, we are in utter bread and circus territories in a culture. So they give us a bread and circus event, a movie event that's literally about bread and circuses. Like this is too on the nose. I don't know, man. I'm so broken and jaded about what we, how uh, 
pop culture is just utterly manipulative now and meant to keep us sedated. I, I have concerns. Uh, next, we go to Adrian Slade. The Democrats will pull Hillary Clinton as, as the new <laughs> candidate. Guys, I'm laughing because there's a poll out today. Uh, I think the Independent in the UK did a poll of who does better against Trump or who Democrats want. I can't, which one is it? I think it's who Democrats prefer. And Kamala Harris is leading the poll. They would prefer her as a, her as a nominee to Trump. But that also, I think Hillary Clinton was up there very highly too, if I, if I remember right. Um, it was, showed up in my feed. I wasn't like looking for it. It just showed up uh, in my feed when I got up this morning on its own. But um, I could buy this. I, I could buy that this somehow ends up I, I, here's what I think, guys. I think there's a lot of potential outcomes here that are all like, there's, let me put it this way. I, I think there's like a dozen potential outcomes here that have anywhere from eight to, you know, from like five to 20% odds of occurring. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. And so, and I could see, and I think that could be one of them. I could see that being one of them. And so I'll buy. Now, it might be on the low end. It might be one of the five percenters. But I, I think there's a myriad of outcomes here that are have a, some very it? similar odds, like winning the Big 12 Conference and football this year. Okay, I mean, like you could legit think 10 teams could win that thing. And I think that's kind of how I could see this going for the next couple of weeks. Uh, I'll buy for the same reason. And no matter what any one of those outcomes would be, all of them, there's not a clean outcome among them. They're all messy. Which candidate is the most willing to embrace the mess because they covet the potential outcome so much? It's clearly a Clinton. So, yeah. Okay. Bane of idiocy says on Monday's show, they, they took it from us rant, immediately followed by, which brings me to Luke 16.8, is the most <laughs> Alex Jones with Bible versus things Steve has ever done. <laughs> 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 Aaron, you had to laugh out loud when you saw this suggestion, yep. okay? And I give you credit that you didn't just start with this one, but had the restraint to let yes. it just kind of, uh, uh, you know, simmer and uh, reach and, and reach the surface on its own. That is awesome sauce, yes. man. Have to buy. That's great. Well true, done. That's a true fan of the show right Yes, there. it is. You get us. You get us. Yes. All right, moving on. Uh, Brian Snyder says the spirit of the age will move much faster now in the U.S. after the election results in France and the U.K., regardless of what happens in November. I think there is a yeah. realistic chance yeah. of this. Um, so I will buy. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Next, we go to Timothy Stevens. In light of the GOP's betrayal, Christians need to realize that persecution is inevitable. They must prepare for, at minimum, forced closure of churches, banning of the Bible, marginalization, including loss of work, violence, injustice, and prison. Um, and buy. I mean, essentially, Christians need to prepare for what every era of Christians and every language and area had to be prepared for until this country was founded. By also, but pri going back to your previous rant, not not primarily because of the GOP's betrayal. Like the, it's that's it's, that's true. That that's it, I would. That's a good point, Todd. The GOP's betrayal is evidence that we're in a negative world. It's not causing the negative world. It's it's an effect of it. Okay, a, a political party. It, it, it you know in the end. The best you'll get out of any political party, because human beings are involved. There's a reason why Thomas Jefferson said once, if I should go to heaven, but only with members of a political party, I, show, I, I wish I shall prefer not to go at all. All right. So, you know, and anytime you have more human beings, there's always going to be more sin because humans are, sin are sinners. So the best you're going to get from a political party, the best. All right. The Republican Party was founded in Jackson, Michigan, to fight the twin evils of polygamy and slavery. It's right there in its charter. All right. Uh, by Christians who were sick and tired of the Whig Party. The minute it, it, a political party is like a like a, a new car. What happens to the value of a brand new car the second you drive it off the lot? Does it appreciate or depreciate? Depreciate. depreciate. The clock is ticking on it. Right. The minute you drive it off the lot. So as a political party, because and especially as it gets more popular, because that's going to mean more people, which is going to mean more what? Sinners. OK, so the best you'll get out of a political party, even in a righteous era, is. And then it recognizes that the wind is blowing in our in the righteous direction and follows suit. See what I'm saying? All right. Now, is the wind if, if you got up, you're running the Republican Party. You did this. You wet your fingers, put it in the wind. Is it blowing in our righteous direction right now? The culture? 
No, No, we're in a negative world now. You're living in a post-Christian culture. We're in a negative world, meaning that the, the institutions of the culture are now hostile to Christianity and incentivize against its witness and acknowledgement, okay? And so the political parties, even the one that alleges to support you, are in recognition of this, okay? The Republican Party is currently in a stage where it is going to try now to, uh, it's going to try to see if you'll, how much it can syncretize us with the, with the culture in the world, okay? And so so this is why you're going to have this is how Franklin Graham and Amber Rose are both are both supporting Donald Trump. OK, they're going to see if they can syncretize this. It won't work long term. It will it, it won't work. It will go either the way of Franklin Graham or Amber Rose, but you cannot keep producing long term. You can't have Amber Rose. That is her name, right? We figured it out this time. Is that her name? I want to make sure I got it right. Um, it is Amber, right? Not I, Andrea. I believe so. Okay. You can't have Amber Rose and Franklin Graham long term on the same side. Won't work. Um, because you're, it won't, well, let me rephrase that. It won't work in a negative world. And it might work in a positive world where Amber Rose decides, well, I'm going to keep doing porn, but I like low taxes since I'm making a lot of money. You see what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. So she'll tolerate that she has to vote for the same candidates as Franklin Graham, who hates her porn, because they both agree that the government shouldn't be taking, you know, 60% of our money. Fair? Okay. When you get into a negative world, though, Amber Rose is like, I don't want to be on the same side as Franklin Graham. He's a hater and a bigot. I don't have to tolerate him. And so the Republican Party is now at the stage where it's going to try and, and syncretize to see if it can put these two various elements together on a broader agenda. And it will work at first. It will not work long term. And one of two things will happen. Either a Josiah-like figure will emerge in the Republican Party. And what do I mean by that? I mean a guy who goes to the high places and tears those down. Okay? Or there will be... Um, um, some form of revival, or it will be bust. And Christians just will have like no agency politically at all. And then what will happen, mark my words here, because I've already had some of these conversations with friends of mine. What will happen then, when we get to the abomination of desolation stage, you're gonna, there, that, there's going to be a huge pull there, okay? And, and if, you, if you know Jewish history, so for the first century of Christianity, Christianity is just an argument largely among Jews about whether Yeshua of Nazareth is Messiah or not, as they're beginning to sprinkle in Gentiles here or there. That's like the first uh, centuries too long, say 50 years of Christianity. Fair. Okay. Um, And then 70 AD comes along and, and there's a split and there are some who are still very Jewish who are like, we have to save our national heritage here and stand against Caesar. And then there are some who are like, when G- well, Jesus told us, when you see the abomin- abomination of desolation, that's not our fight, flee. And they did to Petra, right? And that causes a split, okay? That's going to happen here too. There's, there's going to be a moment openly where... So, uh, if, 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 it, if it's not, if the Republican Party does not anoint a Josiah leader, it will anoint an Antiochus Epiphanes leader. It will anoint a Hadrian leader. It will anoint a Nero leader. Another form of Caesar. And that figure is going to do some abomination of desolation. He's not just going to say something like, okay, you know, we need to have marriage equality, but recognize religious liberty. He's going to go the other step. And say, no, you guys, you Christians need to change your positions on marriage or you can't be here. What will happen then, and that will occur, that will happen, and it won't be, it's not that far away, that will happen if you know your history. There's a reason, it's the same spiritual forces up against each other every single time. That's why history doesn't just repeat, it rhymes. Devil has a greatest hits album. Once that occurs, once once that form of abomination of desolation occurs, there will be a split just like there was in 70 and, and, and then again in, in 110 AD. There will be some believers who will say, well, we have to fight to the end, no matter what. And so, fine, you know, gay marriage is already a thing anyway, so I guess I'm gay now. But if we're gay with border security, okay, you can have my back door provided we're closing the back door of the country. Okay, they'll say that. And they'll, they'll rationalize it over and over and over. And then the other group will say, I, I have no... 
I, I can't violate first things. I can't do that. And I'm not here, you know, I guess if you've made me pick between, um, you know, the, the Philistines and the Romans, I'd probably prefer the Romans and or the Philistines, depending on your perspective, would be in charge of daily affairs. But now you're asking me to disobey things God has clearly spoken into existence, and I can't. So Petra, I guess it is. That's the story. What I just gave you, by the way, is the story of the founding of this country, guys. The pilgrims were not fleeing the Muslims, okay? The pilgrims were not fleeing the, the, the secularists. The pilgrims were not fleeing the spirit of the age. Who were they fleeing? They weren't even fleeing Catholics. They weren't even fleeing the Catholics. They weren't even, they didn't get on a boat to get, they didn't get on a boat and come here to get away from Bloody Mary, guys. They were fleeing the Protestant Church of England for the same thing. Well, the crown says you've got to have your sermons now approved. The crown now says we have to use a particular version of the Bible or you're not preaching the word of God. You're an insurrectionist. Some many Protestants said, well, long live the king. One group said, nah, we out. They founded the country. That's absolutely what's going to happen because it's what always happens in a negative world. Next. All right. Warm Gatorade has this. The left doesn't intend to replace Biden at all, but instead use this narrative to rile up right wing media and its base before November. So when the right loses, they get even more restless. It's all a psyop and everyone is playing into it perfectly. Sell. I'm Sell. selling, but I love the way you think. I love the way you think. Yeah, I'm not here to, you know. Um, if, if your new default system after March 16th of 2020 is, all is PSYOP and PSYOP is all, you're not going to get an argument from me. <laughs> right? Now, here's the thing. It could actually turn out, un it could not turn out unintentionally what he is saying. Yeah. Meaning if they're not successful, okay? Yes. And in, in getting the outcome Agreed. here, they, they clearly want Biden out. They clearly believe he's going to cost them um, a, a, a momentous loss here, okay? The kinds of things that wipe out 30 House seats that they thought they for sure had won, five to seven Senate seats like Sherrod Brown in Ohio, they thought for sure they had won. This is the kind of thing that makes Kerry Lake a U.S. Senator, or maybe the only thing, frankly, okay, is what's going on with Joe Biden right now. And that's what they're afraid of. But here's where I agree with your but I don't agree with your premise, so I'll sell. But here's where I do agree with your conclusion. Demons think four-dimensionally, right? So the primary objective is to get rid of Joe Biden. But if they don't, I could see be, being the hand that gets played here yeah. with this. Yeah. But I don't believe that's the purpose of this. I, I absolutely believe the purpose is to get rid of Joe Biden, 100%. All right, next we go to Dansby Jones. The deep state will keep Biden as the nominee. They can't afford the fallout and chaos of replacing him, which would expose their cover-ups and undermine their control. This is the most likely. How likely? We can't know, but this is the most likely outcome. I will sell in that I, it may be the outcome, but I would not phrase it as keeping Biden. I would phrase, they don't want him. There's not a, the plan here is to be rid of him. They may be stuck with him, but, but a keep denotes that you are the one making the decision. No. The decision they want is he would be gone. So but they, they don't want keep, him as a candidate. Oh, they would love to have him as president again. Oh, yes, I agree with that, but they know that they can't have yeah. that. Yeah, they, they know that. Yeah, they can't separate the two after the debate. Yeah, I agree with that. All right, this is a good time, by the way, as we're talking about living in a negative world, to tell you about our friends at America's Christian Credit Union, because, I mean, a lot of our financial institutions are actually bankrolling much of the spirit of the age that we just had on parade last month, okay? Uh, so if you're looking for an alternative, and not just some new startup, not that there's anything wrong with that, we need more of those, but I know when it comes to your money, you're like, I mean, I'd, I'd prefer to give it to, you know, use people that are tried and true and tested. Well, ACCU's been around for more than 65 years, folks. They're, they're well into their second generation 
mission of serving families, ministries, and businesses across the country that have ditched the big banks and chosen ACCU as their trusted financial partner. Instead, they've got 35,000 branches and ATMs nationwide. They offer great rates, cutting edge mobile banking and convenience and so much more. So if you want to make the switch today, uh, go to America's Christian Credit, America's Christian CU, I should say for credit union, America's plural, America's Christian CU dot com slash switch. And yes, it is uh, insured by the National Credit Union Administration. That's America's Christian CU for credit union, America's Christian CU dot com slash switch. Again, head over to America's Christian CU dot com slash switch. Next, we go to, if I get my buttons right, D. Crum says Donald Trump will win the election, but will be prevented from taking office. I would not mm. say this is a definite 100% no. Yeah, so, so I, will, I will buy. Yeah. I think I don't, uh, it, the odds may be no more than 1%, but I don't think they're zero. I mean, like, for example, he could die, guys. He's 78. If, if, yeah. I mean, we're not rooting for this, but if you got up tomorrow and found out Donald Trump had a heart attack. And, and went home to meet his maker. Would anybody be surprised that a 78-year-old man that loves fast food as much as Donald Trump had a heart attack? No. no. So that could, there, could, there could be lots of things when you're dealing with geriatrics that prevent you from office that don't necessarily have to be sinister in nature. Okay, so but I'll buy. Certainly, once the Democrats, and they will quickly, get, embrace a loss like this, oh, they will turn in earnest to outcomes exactly like this. You can count on it. Uh, next, for some whiplash, Colton says Liberty should make the college football playoff this season if it's only undefeated uh, in the group of five, if it's the only undefeated team in the group of five, or group of whatever it is now, despite uh, playing a weak Conference USA schedule. Todd, your thoughts? Can I shoot the TV? <laughs> um, oh my God. I, I should. I can't make that assessment. i got to sell because I don't know where you know teams like Memphis and uh, Texas San Antonio and... Tulane and um, Toledo and other strong group of fry programs. I don't, I don't know what they did, so I can't say should. Okay, um, we got to get one more in here before the break. Okay, so I'll just with this. Okay. Uh, perpendicular pictures of Pitt, uh, Pittsburgh says, being seriously flawed film full of contrivances, The Last Jedi is the best film of the new trilogy. Like the paternity revelation in uh, TESB, The Empire Strikes Back, it changes the direction of the trilogy was heading in. It also shows how easy it is to fall away from faith if we let past mistakes rule us. Todd, your thoughts? And that's just two in a row. I, I'm heartbroken. Todd went from shooting the screen to shooting himself. I'm heartbroken. I will buy in that I do agree it is by far the best made film of the sequel trilogy. I, I, in fact, it's a very well made film. Despite its uh, flaws that Todd hates, which I would agree with him on. But in terms of the caliber of the filmmaking in and of itself, it is high end. Girl, you're all dead to me. Daniel's next. If we're not all dead to you yet, we're likely about to be. Stay tuned. <laughs> Making sure you've got the fruits and vegetables you need in your diet is important, but it can also be difficult. Produce, first of all, is not inexpensive uh, when you go to the store. Number two, it's also not convenient when you're busy. That's why you can take advantage of that huge gap in your nutrition with our friends over at Balance of Nature. They're your on-the-go solution. It's a part of my daily regimen, and I love it. Uh, they haven't raised their prices, by the way, by the way guys, in, in over 10 years. All right. They have a proprietary blend of 31 fruits and vegetables. So come on. I mean, a lot of us did the 31 flavors of ice cream to, to get the weight that we need to lose. How about now the 31 blends of fruits and vegetables we need to be healthy and stay healthy. They can help you with that at Balance of Nature with their easy to swallow capsules. And they'll, I mean, how could you eat 31 different things of produce in a given day? You couldn't if you tried anyway. So when you go to balanceofnature.com, you'll get 35% off plus $10 off any additional sets with your first order as a preferred customer by using my discount code DACE. Now, that's going to be limited to five sets, but you're still going to save a ton of money while getting the fruits and vegetables that you need in your diet. So go to balanceofnature.com. Use the promo code DACE for 35% off. Balanceofnature.com. Promo code DACE for 35% off at balanceofnature.com. And now he has returned. We bring back, it's been too long, the prophet of woe and lamentation between his travels and ours. 
It has been a few weeks since we have connected with our good friend Daniel Horowitz. And with everything going on, I, I believe I would cheapen this moment by daring to ask a single question. So, Daniel, welcome back. And the floor is yours. It's open mic night. You're Just up. 15 minutes when I should get five hours here. You give me 15 minutes. <laughs> um Steve, yeah, where do, you, where do you begin? I mean, all of life's lessons were embodied in, in the politics, uh, geopolitical events, internationally, nationally, of the last couple weeks. But I'd say – I think there's one thing that's important to realize. I heard you talk about before how there's nothing new under the sun. And you know, at, at a baseline, that is true, and it's I, I mainly agree with it. Um, we have – you know, it's it's that time of year, right? It's, it's starting to look a lot like GOP general elections, where you can't be socially conservative because you're not going to win the election. You can't be fiscally conservative because that's also a liability. You hate poor people. You take away things. Um, we need unity. Uh, we need to make sure it's only only Rockefeller Republicans are able to win down the ballot uh, races. So we need to make sure that they get the nomination. Um, we have to make the donors happy because we do need money. So, you know, we need the visas in Ukraine and and that sort of stuff. Um, but look, it's all going to change after the election. So, I mean, that stuff, I agree with you, Steve. That is – there's nothing new. I mean, it's like the racial pandering, the donor pandering, the class pandering. <laughs> I mean, it's like Bob Michael all over again. Hmm. Okay, so nothing. Has By the changed. way, for people who don't know who Bob Michael was, he was the uh, the the country club Republican House leader for decades, uh, and he was taken out because he helped lead the betrayal of voters when Bush violated his no new tax pledge, and Newt Gingrich was part of the young upstarts in that era and opposed it, and then ultimately took power in the '94 uh, congressional can- uh, elections and to chart a new path and and get rid of country club Republicans. That that was 30 years ago. There's nothing new under the sun. Yeah, there's yeah. nothing new under the sun. But Steve, I, I do have to say, and I don't know if you agree or disagree, but I do think there is one thing that is distinctly new. And that is we never had Bob Michael, Bob Dole, John McCain with the adoration of a king, an emperor, a god that had the ability to quell 100% of any sort of disquiet on the right, any sort of strategy to either move the top line guy on certain issues to the right or at least focus on some parallel things that maybe don't run amok the general election. Uh, we never had that situation where we had a, you know, a, a John McCain who had the ability to not just help his guys win re-election or win open seats, but to knock out incumbent good guys uh, where not a single bad guy, despite all the betrayals, goes down in a primary. And the only guy to go down in a primary is one of the top five conservatives in the House. That we've never had. Um, You know, yeah, I mean, regardless of the platform, the GOP does what it does. Uh, but we've never had a scenario where you take it up the you-know-where. I mean, wasn't there a term for that in 2016? It was cuck-servative, like something like it's kind of crude, <laughs> and I hate to talk this way, but you're you're sort of happy and in, and you know get off on on getting screwed, sort of thing. Like so, that's that's kind of new. And th- the biggest observation I've had this week, and I was speaking to some friends about about this. You have this NatCon conference going on. Uh, with all this in the backdrop. Um, and I'm seeing some clips from it, some speakers, a lot of friends there. Um, and, and I'd say this is what I'm most frustrated about. And, and and again, this is what is new. Never before have we had so many figures on the right that have projected such an outward right-wing aesthetic, okay? And, and, and really tries to create this intellectual movement around, yes, we recognize that there's nothing new under the sun, and we keep spinning like the hamster on the wheel, and we keep making the same mistakes, and we got to change things. Except the problem is they don't look in the mirror that they embody that. So, um, I, you know, I, again, I saw this as a quote from Jack Persobiak, who, you know, I'd say probably would be in the top five sort of MAGA – Bannon guys and 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 not the sort of Bruce Jenner wing, but but the wing that on paper, I think would 
the movement wing. Ninety nine percent. Right there's the, there's of the what grift. You and I say. Like Ron Paul had the, the uh, you know an industry wing, and a lot of those guys that ended up going to jail, and then had a movement wing. Okay, D- Donald Trump has the same thing. There's a movement wing and there's a grifter yeah. wing. You'd put Posobiec in the movement wing is where you would put him. I mean, ideologic. Well, well I'm saying it's not like he's doing the Bruce Jenner, and so so like this. There's this movement. Meaning Never you think he's a guy that has some, act, like Bannon, has real beliefs here. Okay. Real beliefs. Okay. Real beliefs. And I, wa- I want to take them face value sincerely. In other words, it's not Doug Burgum. It's not Tim Scott. It's not what we're seeing at the power structure level. Um, never before. And you see it's not Amber Rose point. who tweeted that Trump was a sexual predator in 2018, became a porn star, but, and is now getting invited to speak at the RNC convention. It's not that. Quite the contrary. Right. What you're finding at this NatCon conference Christian nationalism. We need to be unabashedly Christian. America restore its Christian character. Again, I have nothing against that as a non-Christian. I've, I'm, I'm all for that. America was founded as a Christian country. That That's great. Um, we need to awareness of the white genocide, the demographics. We're sick of the you know, racial pandering, the donor pandering. I mean, it, it, Steve, it's a good time to be alive. I, I would, There's more people than ever. I would love to sit down with and have a beer and and let, let's do it mm-hmm. jack got up there and again i don't mean to pick on him but it just it stood out to me because he literally articulated my critique of their movement without any self-awareness for too long conservatives have focused entirely on principles but not power when you have power without principles you're a tyrant when you have principles without power you're delusional. And my, you know, my thesis is the issues that matter, the way they matter, the time that they matter, that we're always talking in the abstract about, yeah, we need to fight this demographic stuff. We need to fight the increased immigration. We need to fight the degeneracy and, you know, bring back the Christian values. But then when it comes to the practical exercising of power in the few moments that will determine those outcomes. So the legislative battles, the speaker's battle, um, moving the battle for Trump's heart and soul and pressuring him and having a Harriet Myers moment when he does things like he's done the last number of months and increasingly the last couple of weeks, the down the ballot primaries, all of this stuff, the state legislatures, I find that either their MIA at best or downright helping the subversion. So it's like having a sports talk radio show that's broadcasting in the midst of a Super Bowl, like the Super Bowl is playing and you're getting up there talking about, hey, next season's draft pick, uh, you know, what what September is going to look like as if the Super Bowl is not playing out. So they're out there this week with the Christian nationalism, Christian nationalism. And you literally have while the, the king is taking rent. the pro life stuff, for example, out of the party platform. Is that, that your point? And I'm not even like I'm not even as bothered by that. I mean, I am ideologically, but all right, on a surface level, the data shows we're losing temporarily on that. But the same data shows we're winning against the homosexual agenda. They watered down the treaty stuff. They took gay marriage out at a time when it's dropped 18 points among Republicans. But that's precisely why Rick Grinnell was bragging how. Um, the Trump penthouse was never used for a fundraiser, and the first and only time it was used was for the log cabins. They are successfully remaking the party in the worst image of the Rockefeller Republicans on the very things, the racial pandering, the donor pandering, uh, the the anti-Christian degeneracy. And it's like it's it's like it's not happening. And what what I what I cannot relate to, and and I literally I don't know. How many analogies to use? I don't know how to better articulate this, but this notion, huh, you want Biden? Huh, huh, you want Biden? As if there's no like, well, no, you could support, ultimately vote for Trump, but that's not who you are, and you don't show that you're okay with it, and you try to have a Harriet Myers moment. Now, I know, as you stated, Steve, a lot of people, you know, Genesis began in the year 2015, right? They, they don't know it existed mm-hmm. before then, mm-hmm. but – See, this is where I would disagree with you a little bit. We did have a Harriet Myers moment where, you know, I quoted on my show from Rush Limbaugh's transcripts what he said at the time, and it was very instructive in the time we live in, where we had mainstream conservative columnists, even like the Charles Crownhammer types, they unanimously said, no way. Now, Steve, is there anything in the Constitution that says that conservative radio hosts and columnists get a veto on your pick? I mean, no. When has it, have we ever downed a pick when there's no scandal and 
your party controls the Senate, so it's not like the Senate is balking at, you know, the Senate Republicans are leftists. They were fine with Harriet Myers. Well, you know, do you want Nancy Pelosi, Steve? Huh? Well, you know, it's, it's Bush or Pelosi. But no, we had enough brain cells to know, well, Okay, well, they supported that didn't both. Have, that, that, was, that was a totally different, I mean, that was nearly 20 years yeah, ago. We, we, we were not in an election God. year. We were not in an election year. Bush was, was close a, to the midterms. It was Bush was a, was a lame, it, but he wasn't on the ballot and was a lame duck and was already flailing with a rock and everything else. We were also not nearly as godless as we are right now. See, that, I, 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 don't, I don't know Jack Posobiec well. I, you know, he loved Nefarious and was very kind to it, and I appreciate that. Beyond him, that, I've had no interactions with him. I think he's been on the show one time, like, ever. So I don't know him very well. But I, without even knowing him at all, I can answer your riddle for you why he did it that way. It's not Jack Posobiec isn't the problem. The people are. If Jack Posobiec connected the dots you want connected, Jack Posobiec's platform would fall apart. There is no market there is no market in, in, in mass for holding, Trump, for holding Trump accountable from the right. The public does not want that. Our base does not want that. They just don't. They want to hear Trump is a victim perpetually and tiptoes between the raindrops. If, That's if what the they want to hear. If the 110 organizations that were signed on to Project 2025 would have a letter and say, hey, cut it out. We don't like where you're headed. He would back off. I, I don't agree. Trump, Trump would come off the I, top. Maybe 2016 Trump would have or 2018. This Trump knows he's king and he's behaving as well, he'll come off the top rope months. and tell people to stop giving money to heritage and they will. He owns this. He's in complete control. Point he's USA in potentate. Signed on to that. What's that? Turning point USA is signed on to that too. He's potentate. He can do whatever he wants. Heritage. He can do whatever he wants. 110 organizations. Yep. That wouldn't make a difference. He's king. He knows it's this. Funny. I get, he, he, he originally th- he, see. He originally thought we could do stuff like that and pressure him. He knows that we can't now. He know he, he knows, know he knows that Marjorie Danielsfer of the SBA list will walk out and sign off to, on his pro life platform that has no pro life in it. He knows this now, and so he will behave accordingly. He's a king, and that he's the it king that people wanted. What's that? Oh, I agree. It doesn't have to be this way, but it's the way that the people wanted it. And that's why Jack Posobiec and all those people, that's why Steve Bannon can't do it. That's why they cannot connect those dots, my friend. If they do, their platforms fall apart. There is no market to hold Trump accountable from the right. Trust me. It's a miracle my show has grown as much as it has trying to do this. And, 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 and I think maybe the only reason I've been successful doing it is other than you and me and a few others, so few are doing it that we kind of own that entire space ourselves. OK, so so but 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 in mass, <laughs> in mass, there is no market for holding Trump accountable from the right. Nobody in but mass. Our people don't want it. Even if I see that point, Steve, that's only half of my directive. The other half is these 110 organizations. OK, so their whole thing was, yeah, we're going to build a personnel bank and we're going to make sure we rectify the mistakes. And Trump's like, screw that. We ain't doing that. We're doing the Doug Burgum, Lindsey Graham. OK, if they were to take a fraction of their resources and focus on the red states, don't tell me the people would reject that. OK, I mean, some of this stuff is they don't know. They don't care. They're not going to reject. Daniel, that. you don't remember when Trump signed on to Paul Ryan's not uh, Obamacare appeal? repeal and friends of ours in congress were calling who were opposing this thing that wasn't a repeal and friends of ours in congress were calling you and i and saying they're getting calls from conservatives saying why are you standing in the way of trump repealing obamacare you don't remember that because i certainly do trump is lord small l he can do and say whatever he wants there's no one to oppose him there is no market to oppose him there's no interest in opposing him nobody wants him opposed so they will get the king they asked for and we'll play it out and see whether he's Saul or david he's a bigger lord among the chattering class than he was in 2016 not as much among the people they'll vote for him the intensity is not there i'm just telling you i i don't believe that would replay um, I don't believe that if the people said, hey, we don't want sodomy, the, 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 the these guys would say, get off the sodomy stuff. They'd be like, we want the Bruce people Jenner. think Trump is the people. The people think Trump is anti sodomy. The people think Trump that. is the most right based person persona there is. That's what the people think. I understand. So yeah. therefore saying we're going to keep this out. You're not going to lose your job for doing that. I, I just, I Steve, we all. I'll give you the last word, then I gotta go. Go ahead, brother. We all agree that it's the people and 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 the fake leadership, but 
you know, it's a matter of the pie graph. How much is 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 each percent? And I just want to make it clear. I don't want to let these people off the hook. It's always the people's problem. The founders envisioned that, which is why they didn't want direct democracy. I mean, most people weren't for the revolution and they weren't going to do it on their own. But a small group of people, there is still a lot of angles that we could pick and do things constructively and actually fulfill the edicts of this NatCom, con, uh, you know, confab. But they have no intention of doing it. And that, I think, is a little bit divorced from the people. I, good stuff, my friend. I think it's a conversation our people needed to hear. I appreciate you bringing it. Thank yep. you. Did not disappoint. Love you, man. Take, Take care. care. Hey, we here at Blaze Media are proud to announce our newest edition. And it just so happens to be with a very good friend helping to anchor it. Jill Savage is starting along with uh, another good buddy of ours, our senior editor here, uh, Matt Peterson, or our, our chief news editor. Uh, and Chris Bedford, we just had on... Uh, the comments I got from Chris Bedford's first appearance on the show, by the way, there are people, not just you guys, they're like, that dude is good, okay? They are starting a brand new show premiering Thursday here on The Blaze News Tonight. Blaze News Tonight, uh, starting on July 11th. You can go to the Blaze News Tonight YouTube channel, hit that subscribe button, turn on notifications, never miss an episode. I did a spec episode with them yesterday, kind of a trial run. Loved the format, thought it was really slick. I think it's going to be really good, all right? So premieres this Thursday, Blaze News Tonight coming right up here on The Blaze. We're going to stick around and finish by seller hold in the overtime. For the rest of you, Romans 828.